Welcome back to Okaloosa Today. I'm Doug Rayner with the City of Destin, and we've been talking with Councilman Larry Hines and Matt Trammell, an engineer for the city, um, a contracted engineer with Taylor Engineering about beach restoration, uh, an upcoming project. Um, we got to get in some history and, and things like that and some need for restoration, and clearly uh, our beaches are in that need. Um, Matt, we were going to get into now um, kind of the philosophy behind restoration and really an overview of what restoration is really because everybody thinks it's just throwing sand up but there's a good bit more to it than that. Correct uh, and yeah I guess philosophically what we're trying to do is replace sand that has been lost to the system um, and in our particular case for West Destin the impacts of Opal, Ivan, they've kind of put us in a whole different realm here and we're not seeing the natural recovery on the beach that we would expect. Um, so what we're going to do, the, the design principles that we um, took forth in designing this project were, you know, we'd like to mitigate for the storm-induced erosion, uh, we'd like to increase the storm protection to those upland properties, uh, but we'd also like to enhance the recreational opportunities and promote tourism. So we'd like to provide a nice, healthy, wide beach with, you know, the same uh, high-quality sand that we have out there existing today. And then also, we'd like to preserve and enhance those natural resources. We have a lot of endangered species um, and protected, fairly protected species out there, shorebirds, turtles, uh, that we need to protect in that, that habitat. Well, then that's that's something that Councilman Hines mentioned earlier is um, protecting the upland structures. We're talking about homes and, and, and boats and things like that. Also, uh, uh, recreational needs. Um, how important is that to the city of Destin from a council perspective, from a resident perspective? Well, it's crucial. Uh, tourism is Destin's number one industry. It creates more jobs for uh, in the city than any other industry. Uh, tourism accounts for about a third of the county's economy. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, we're fortunate in the fact that we have 50 to 75,000 tourists visiting us every day in the summertime. Uh, that's how many are here this week. <laughs> I believe And it. Uh, they contribute hugely to our economy, so they're very important to us. Well, good. And it sounds like we have a good plan, and that's something we're going to get into now is, mm -hmm. is the scope of the West Destin Project. That's what this is being called. Right. If we could see the, the shot of the, the Barrow area. Um, yeah, here we have East Pass. The project area is immediately to the east of uh, East Pass. It extends, um, you know, a, a few thousand feet uh, to the to the east. The Barrow area is located about three miles to the west. Um, we spent an extensive amount of time locating a Barrow area with sufficient material that uh, matched or exceeded uh, the the quality and character of the existing beach. Um, next, we'll show a slide of the the project area close up. Um, the Reach One area is about uh, almost a mile, 0 0.8 miles, extends from the east jetty uh, just to um, the eastern boundary of Destin on the Gulf. The Reach 2 project area extends from Sandpiper Cove uh, just east of uh, Shoreline Towers there. It's about a, almost a half a mile segment. And those two segments together uh, will receive approximately 600,000 cubic yards of, of sand. Okay, good. And that sounds <coughs> like a lot of sand. Hopefully that'll, that'll get it done. Yeah. And I think we have one additional slide here. Uh, this is the, what can be taken as a typical cross section. Uh, this is what we're going to do. As you can see, that red line is what can be taken as the existing beach condition. Um, very minimal beach width, very minimal dunes. Uh, we're going to construct a 30 foot wide dune at a 14 foot elevation. It's going to be quite a considerable structure. A back berm at an eight and a half foot elevation, uh, 30 foot wide, that's to provide toe protection to the dune. And then the berm extension, uh, that's the actual beach width. As you can see, it's going to be, you know, on the order of 200 feet or more. Um, so we're actually shifting the water line out in some areas 300 feet from where it is today. It's a, quite an extensive project. So that'll <coughs> add a good bit of beach to an area that doesn't have very much beach right now. Absolutely. And we're, we're increasing the storm protection. Some of these storms, as you mentioned, are vulnerable to even minor tropical events. Uh, we're increasing that storm protection to a 50 to 100 year storm event, which okay. is quite a significant. And speaking of storms, Councilman Hines, we talked a little while ago about uh, a storm that we recently had come through here and, and some effects it had. It, it definitely had an effect on our current beach right now. Yeah, Tropical Storm Debbie, uh, even though it didn't make a landfall even here or even near us, it churned in the Gulf for about three days, kicked up uh, eight to 10 foot uh, swells and some wind and gradually eats away at the berms. And that's kind of what happens. And that's why it's so important that we really need uh, a beach restoration project like this to restore that so we have protection from the upland properties. Well, and that's and that's where we are right now and luckily we have Matt here who can tell us, you know, the process of a beach restoration and, and I'll mm -hmm. just kind of let you go through that. Sure. 
Uh, as you mentioned, you know, the permitting is extensive. Uh, we did a number of feasibility studies to make sure, find out first what the need is, what the existing properties, storm protection, what storm protection they had and, and, and were offered, uh, and then looked at that in uh, designing the project. We also performed a number of environmental assessments. Uh, we'd like to protect these properties and um, enhance the beach, but we'd also like to do that in an environmentally responsible way. Um. <clears throat> oh, well, and, and then our environment is crucial to to everything we have here in, in the city. Correct. And here we have a slide of, uh, you know, exactly how it's done is, you know, we have a dredge go out to the borrow site. He sucks up material, hauls it over, and offloads it onto the beach via pipeline. Um, here you can see the, the pipeline on the beach. It's spilling out a sand and water slurry mixture. Uh, there's the dredge in the background. And those bulldozers, what they're doing is actually shaping the sand um, to meet our design template. Okay. Very good. And this was uh, from the West Destin project. Is that what this was looking like? That's correct. Uh, th this picture was from the West Destin project, and the previous picture was from our Holiday Isle project. You can okay. see the gazebo in the background. Very good. Very good. Well, um, let's move into um, some of our uh, talk a little bit about the sand that's going to be coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to tell us a little bit about that? I know that sand's not always something people talk about when we get into beach restoration. Yeah, the uh, the quality and the character of the sand is is. Uh, very important. Uh, we have some of the highest quality sand uh, in the state of Florida, uh, the highest coarseness and the highest uh, color. Um, what we'd like to do is match that as close as possible and we spent an extensive amount of time, years, uh, documenting that and we have uh, geotechnical engineers and uh, geologists that have certified our borrow site that it meets the same general character as the sands on the beach, the same grain size, the same color, uh, silt content, etc. Perfect. Well, let's talk a little bit about a sustainable uh, system. It's something you've mentioned when we talked about this. Tell us what a sustainable system is, and we have about um, two minutes left. Sure. Yeah, we'd like to, uh, you know, when we design the beach, we want to make sure that it's going to be turtle friendly. Uh, shorebirds are going to be able to nest there, again, going into the sand quality and the character. But when we design those berm heights and those dunes, uh, we've taken into account all those environmental aspects. But further, we want to make sure that those dunes are uh, vegetated with native vegetation, uh, not only sea oats but also a diverse mix of native vegetation. So we're creating that ecosystem there and then it can be self-sustaining. And that's something that you plan for way in advance. You, you, you model this after other areas, I assume. Absolutely. We know what works best in our area and uh, that, that's exactly what we're sticking with. Good. Um, Councilman Hines, give us a time frame on this project. What are we, lo we were looking at getting started in late fall? Looking at uh, probably November would be an ideal time to get started. That uh, is, the tourist season is pretty much over then. A lot of uh, condominiums have weddings scheduled in September and October, and I've had a few phone calls saying we want to make sure we have our beach weddings. Uh, that's also pretty much when the hurricane season is over, so we could probably do our beach restoration project during that time period and not be affected by bad weather. And then we could get it done uh, prior to the spring break in March. And uh, what, Matt, takes about six weeks to do the whole project and start to finish once they start? That's correct. It'll be uh, probably 60 days um, total, but 30 days of, of actually pumping sand. There'll be a little bit of mobilization, demobilization. Oh, that's great. And uh, just this sounds like a great project, a very much needed project. We can't thank you enough for coming on, talking about this. Matt, all of your work that you've been doing on this project, it's extensive. And, and we really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and we're looking forward to it. Like Matt said, it should have lots of sea oats and sand fences and should be maintained. The project includes funds to maintain uh, the vegetation and monitor it. So we hopefully it'll last a long time and create a great beach for our citizens and condominiums. Well, that's great. We're looking forward to that too. Uh, please be sure to check the City of Destin's website, cityofdestin.com. Matt Trammell is going to supply the city with a lot of information uh, throughout the project and we'll update you when that project gets started. Please stay tuned for Ted Corcoran with the City of Fort Walton Beach. We thank you for watching.